Talk about All AR and VR, things. because that's the furthest out, yeah. although you're introducing. VR is awesome. Yeah, thank you. Okay. <laughs> Same thing. Okay. All right. And? And? No, it's, um, you know, I remember when we first, um, uh, first started looking at, at VR and, and we saw the first demos. And I mean, these things, you know, a few years ago were, were just look like a pair of ski goggles with duct tape and a mm -hmm. cell phone screen, you know, jammed mm -hmm. into it. And it's hooked up to a PC and you're kind of looking around look the like thing. Now they look like goggles with something. Very beautiful. With, with beautiful versions. But beautiful. Still not. Um, but, uh, hey, come out with me on Saturday night. <laughs> look, but all right. but, but the, the thing that was interesting is you kind of had this experience and it was a solitary experience. And I think people really saw the application for gaming right away. It's right. like, okay, great. This is a really great gaming device. But what mm -hmm. was really interesting is taking that and saying, okay, we're about connecting people and, and social. So what, what does Facebook and VR mean? And, and thinking through, okay, this thing is the closest thing we're going to get to, to a teleporter, to the ability for me to feel like I'm at a place with someone else, right. even though we can't physically be in the same location, sure. family members or others. And it, you know, what's surprising is it took us another year of development until we had the, the touch controllers mm -hmm. and a demo we called Toy Box, where you have two people kind of playing in this little room. Mm -hmm. And then you know, a little bit later when I demoed something in F8 where I was on stage and someone else was 35 miles away and we we're kind of touring around. And so it's, it's one of these things that's hard to describe until you try it, but mm -hmm. when you have these moments of, you know, these vivid memories I have of being in VR with another person. Mm -hmm. And you're like, this is a technology that's, that's, that I think gonna erase geographic boundaries for people. For more than two people now that you've gotten it? Oh yeah, one oh yeah, no, person. you can do more than two. You can do, we've done groups of people, you know, are the, the team that's building some of these experiences does their Friday afternoon meetings in VR. Mm -hmm. So they all get together in, in VR and they do it in VR. <clears throat> and, and where so, do they do it? In like Sri Lanka? Or <laughs> you know, we could probably spruce up the room they're in. You know, right. it's a pretty boring little 3D room. Right. But, you know, it's a... Uh, you know, that is already a better experience. So than, the than application for Facebook, well, you can think of lots of other ones, would be getting together, showing baby pictures, showing the baby, yeah. whatever, that kind of thing. Or anything. I anything. mean, it's really about empathy. Mm -hmm. So there was this great uh, VR film done, Clouds Over Sidra, which actually walked through a Syrian refugee girl's experience. We all know we have a huge refugee crisis, but mm -hmm. to be able to experience it in that kind of environment and feel it a little bit more. At the end of the day, Facebook, is about people connecting. Our mission is to give people the power to share. Mm -hmm. And anything that makes that sharing more real, gives us more empathy towards each other, is something we're for. So the, to the, when you talk about the key things, I, I agree with that. If it, if it gets developed and gets given out to enough people and it's easy to use, right now it's expensive. It's it will. I mean, this is why it's a 10-year thing. Look, yeah. I think that people are maybe, you know, it took 10 years for cell phone, smartphones yeah. to get to a billion, billion people. So I think the key thing is there's no reason this can't get there, but it, it will take time. You know, you, people have to have patience. Does something have to happen in the way it's presented? Because it's still a cumbersome experience. I think you'll see, you know, iterative development on this. You know, mm -hmm. the headsets will get... They'll get easier to put on, they'll get smaller and lighter, the resolution will get better, the content will get better. I mean, this takes years of iteration. And that's why, you know, for us, when we say 10 years, what we mean is we're going to be patient about it, even when everyone else decided it was a fad mm -hmm. and they decided they're not interested. Well, now they're all in. We're going to keep going. Right, now they're all in. Because that will happen. This is how these cycles go. Right. Um, but w we do think it is a transformational technology. for the, And it is, you know, Cheryl's point, it's like the ultimate empathy device. You right. want to really know what it's like to be in someone else's shoes. Mm -hmm. I don't know of another technology in the time horizon where I'm going to be alive that is like this. So what do you, you're working on VR. Yeah. AR which will help people. You're not making a Google Glass like <laughs> act thing, are you? You just laughed at me. <laughs> no, I mean we're no. we're, we're looking making a Google Glass like device. We're, we're looking I mean AR is an interesting I, concept too. I don't think the technology is there yet. Because I mean, it's, there are many uninvented technologies in making something that's lightweight, is you know cosmetically acceptable for people in a real world, which is where you are, um, and has the right kind of display fidelity that you'd want to, to make that work. But there's a lot of interesting technology to build there, and so we're we're building that technology to try to get there. To try and we're to working at AI, and we're working on AI. AI, and yes, that's exactly. really important. Let's talk about that finally. Yeah, I mean AI is another. I mean, you know, Bill Gates talked about it earlier today, and, and others. It's um, it's. You know, for us, it's another one of these transformational technologies, especially for connecting people. You know, it's 800 million people a, a month are seeing posts translated. So if you have a friend or family member who speaks a different language, we can translate it. There's, you know, um, hundreds of millions of people with visual disabilities, and we can, for the two billion photos that are uploaded on Facebook, we can automatically generate captions for, for every one of those, for anyone who may need it. And we just talked yesterday about how, you know, a challenge with all of this content is making sure the right stuff is on the platform and, and none of the stuff that violates the community standards. And you know, it turns out our AI systems are now reporting more of that content than all of the people on Facebook are. Are you nervous about these programs? We're asking this of everybody. Is it something that you think about, of where it goes? 
Well, I mean, it's change, right? And technology has changed, and so I understand why you know there's there people are nervous about it. But you know, the power of AI to improve healthcare, to you know, make every doctor in the world with the power of computer vision, you know, as good as the world's best dermatologist or radiologist. You know, do do you want to make sure the doctor you see is the absolute best or like pretty good? I want a computer to diagnose everything. Yeah, so so I mean, it just has the power. It can it's going to stop seventy thousand car accidents in the U.S. when auto braking is on. You know, every every car, which will happen. You know, in in, in a few decades, um, and then you know, on Facebook, it's not only preventing the bad content, it's translating things. It's if there's any barrier between you communicating different language. You know, uh, any disability like AI can erase that. That's the happy vision of it. Or what? or thinking about you know diagnosing skin melanoma, right? With AI, anywhere in the world, you can have the equivalent diagnosis of the very best person at Sloan Kettering. Mm -hmm. That's unbelievable. Yeah, and so yes. I think every technology presents challenges. Of course, there are things to be worried about. We have a responsibility, any of us who are developing it. But we live, we all live longer, healthier, better lives because of technology. And we believe in that progress.